Hello everyone and welcome to the Autodesk Build Document Management and Meetings Core Training. My name is Pete Gilmurray and I'll be your host for today's webinar. We're going to start things off with a brief introduction and then move right into the product where we'll do a deep dive into some of the key features within Autodesk Build. Autodesk Build is packed with powerful tools and features that connect data, workflows, and teams throughout the entire building lifecycle. And in today's webinar, I'm going to demonstrate a few tools that exemplify just that such as sheets, files, and meetings. While the allotted time for today's webinar isn't enough to cover every detail of these subjects, by the time we're finished, you should be able to upload and publish sheets to your Autodesk build project, manage sheet versions, create and share markups with your team members, upload and organize project files, manage team members' access to those project files, compare and review revisions, create meeting agendas, invite and collaborate with meeting attendees, and capture and share meeting minutes. Now before we get started, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. First, this webinar was designed with the expectation that you've already been through some of the Autodesk Build Basic Getting Started training and you're ready to start building off of some of those previous lessons. If this isn't the case, I don't want to discourage you from attending today's session, I just want to avoid any chance you may feel lost. Having said that, after this webinar, I'll share with you some of the additional support and training resources to fill in some of those blanks or take you even further in your Autodesk Build education. There's a lot of content to cover in a short amount of time, so to avoid any interruptions, we have muted everyone to keep the background noise to a minimum. However, we still want to encourage you to ask whatever questions may come up during this webinar, so please utilize the Zoom Q&A feature located at the bottom of the screen so that we don't miss anyone's inquiries. Finally, I want to make sure that everyone is aware that this webinar is being recorded and will be distributed to all who registered in case you'd like to review any of this content later on. As we get started, I wanted to briefly remind you of the Autodesk Construction Cloud and where Autodesk Build fits in. As I briefly mentioned a moment ago, the Autodesk Construction Cloud is our vision for connecting data, teams, and workflows across the entire project lifecycle. We support the vision through a collection of cloud-based product offerings that deliver best-in-class support for key project workflows. You may already be familiar with some of the products that make up the Autodesk Construction Cloud, whether that is Assemble, Pipe, Building Connected, BIM 360, or PlanGrid. This year, we introduced the first set of products on our new Autodesk Construction Cloud platform, including Autodesk Build, along with Autodesk BIM Collaborate for design collaboration and model coordination workflows, and Autodesk Takeoff for 2D and 3D takeoffs. We also introduced Autodesk Docs, which is the common data environment and document management foundation for all projects on this new platform, delivering a single source of truth for all project stakeholders. The platform is rounded out by powerful data analytics tools delivered in Insight, and an incredibly thorough but yet easy to use set of administrative tools. Together, the Autodesk Construction Cloud helps builders, designers, and owners drive better business outcomes together. Okay, that wraps up our introduction. Let's go ahead and jump into the product. So the first thing I need to do is log into the Autodesk Construction Cloud from my preferred internet browser, and then select the project I'll be working in from the project list view. Once the project opens, I'm greeted by the project home screen a high-level snapshot of what's going on within my project. Besides the project home screen, another indicator that I'm in the correct ACC product is by checking the product picker in the upper left-hand corner. And just below the product picker is the side navigation bar running along the left-hand side of the screen where I'll find the Sheets tool. As the project administrator, I have the ability to upload, publish, and distribute sheets to the rest of my project team. I can begin uploading sheets from the Sheets tool or clicking on Sheets here, directly from the project home screen. Clicking Sheets will start a four-step upload and publish workflow. In step one, I'll upload my set of sheets by choosing files from my computer or by dragging them into the upload area. A set of sheets can be a single PDF packet made up of multiple sheets, or I can select a set of sheets broken out into a group of individual PDFs. I'll click Next to the version set. Here in step two, I'll give my version set a name and an issuance date. The sheets I'm uploading are part of the version set. If this is a new version set of sheets I'm uploading, I'll enter the version set name here. 
Oftentimes, I can find the version set name in the revision block on the drawings I'm uploading. I'll also select an issuance date from the calendar. We recommend this date be the date the drawings were issued by the design team. Then I'll click Next to Sheet Numbers. I'm now ready for step three, reviewing and editing sheet numbers. When my sheets are uploaded and processed, sheet numbers were extracted automatically from the sheet's title block using OCR technology or optical character recognition. I'll scroll through this list and review the sheet numbers. I can see the file names, sheet thumbnails, and the sheet numbers that were extracted. I can easily compare the title block of the sheet with the extracted sheet number. I can even adjust the row height to make it easier to review more sheets at a time by clicking and dragging the slider down here. Now by default, all sheet numbers should come in automatically with the help of OCR. However, if I need to edit these sheet numbers, I can do it by manually typing the sheet number in the field here, or by clicking the selection box next to the corresponding sheet I need to edit, and then selecting Draw Sheet Title Area, which allows me to highlight and target a specific place on my sheets where I'd like the OCR to rescan. We'll walk through this process together a little later on. Lastly, one other way of customizing my sheet numbering is by clicking on Edit Sheet Number Options. From here, I can use the file names as sheet numbers, number the sheets sequentially, or edit with rules. If I want to edit with rules, I can click Add a Rule, where then I can add sheet number characters, trim characters, keep characters, or replace characters. When I'm done reviewing or customizing my sheet numbers, I'll click Next to Titles and Tags. On this page, I can see extracted sheet numbers, the sheet thumbnails, sheet titles, and tags. Similar to sheet numbers, sheet titles are extracted automatically, but they're not extracted from the sheet title block by default. Rather, if uploaded, they're extracted from the sheet index. If there's no index sheet, or for some reason the sheet titles weren't extracted properly, I can always edit them. Just like when I was editing sheet numbers a moment ago, I can click into the sheet title field and edit them one by one, or I can edit sheet titles in bulk by selecting the sheets using the selection boxes. Once I'm done reviewing sheet titles, in this last column is tags. Tags allow me to group and find sheets quickly, and this is particularly useful for my team in the field. If the sheets follow AIA naming standards, sheets will automatically be tagged by discipline. In other words, A sheets will be tagged as architectural, C sheets civil, and E electrical, and so on. Now that I have the ability to manually tag sheets before publishing, I'll add basement to this sheet's tags field. Rather than manually tagging each sheet here, there's an even more efficient way of tagging all your sheets, which I'll demonstrate for you shortly after publishing. After sheet titles and tags have been reviewed, I'll go ahead and click Publish Sheets. Once sheets are published, project members are then notified through email that new or updated sheets are available. They can then access this new project data through the Sheets tool on either the PlanGrid Build mobile app or from the web platform. From the web, I have the ability to adjust how my sheets are displayed by toggling between the grid view and the list view. Personally, I like how the grid view offers a better glance at your sheets through larger thumbnails, which lends itself to being the best solution for a mobile device while walking the job site as a replacement for that roll of paper under your arm. However, the list view prioritizes visibility to sheet attributes, which is more useful when it comes to editing my record set from the web browser which, as a project admin, is really my priority. Now before I jump into editing sheets, I'm going to go ahead and upload the newest version of my record set. When it comes to updating our record set with the latest revision, the process is nearly identical to uploading our initial set. This time, while still in the Sheets tool, I'll click Add Sheets here and follow the same steps as before. I'll upload my revision set, assign new revision set name, and apply a new issuance date to this set. And because this is a new set, the date should fall after the previous version's issuance date so that it's leafed in correctly. Keep in mind that the issuance date dictates the chronological order for your sheets in this project, so it's important to select the correct date. Just to reiterate this point once more, we always recommend getting this date from the drawing set itself or the date the drawings were issued by the design team. It's also worth pointing out an existing version set will now appear over here to the right. This is particularly helpful if you're uploading sheets that may have been mistakenly left out of the previous version set upload. 
Next, just as before, I'll start with reviewing our sheet numbers. Since this is a revision, notice that under the revision history, some of the sheets are indeed revisions and some are completely new issuance of sheets. I'll proceed with reviewing the titles and tags and edit any sheet titles as necessary. As for tags, any tags applied to the previous sheet version will be automatically carried over to the new revision. Here I can see the basement tag that I had previously applied to the A100 sheet and now has been applied to the new revision. I noticed that some of my sheet titles didn't fill in during the initial scan. I could manually fill them in, but this is a great opportunity to utilize the draw sheet title area and have the OCR do that work for me. Because I have a smaller set here that I'm editing and I want to make sure that I don't miss any, I'll go ahead and click the select all selection box and then click draw sheet title area. I'll zoom into the title block here, select the drawing tool, Draw out the area large enough to include a third line of text, but being careful not to run over any other lines or characters which could cause errors in the scan. And then click Save to Finish. Once we publish our sheets, any new revisions of sheets will simply supersede the older versions, while still retaining that original set. If you ever make a mistake with dates or titles of your sheet versions, don't worry. The Sheets tool provides an easy way of editing and managing your sheets even after publishing and it's located up here in Settings under Version Sets. Also under Settings is the ability to create customized permissions for individual team members or groups, similar to what you learned about in the Getting Started webinar, only this is specific to the Sheets tool. And here under Advanced Settings, there's even the ability to set an expiry period for any shared links to sheets or files with other project stakeholders outside of your Autodesk Build project team. While we don't have enough time to explore this subject any further today, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned them, and if you'd like to learn more, click here on the question mark and check out the Autodesk Build Help Center. Or stay to the end of today's webinar to hear about some other helpful resources. Let's click back on Sheets and return to the list view. From the list view, I can see a small thumbnail of my sheets with the title and sheet number, the number of revisions uploaded for any particular sheet within my record set, who the sheet was last updated by, as well as the version set the most up-to-date sheet belongs to. There are also symbols that represent the different kinds of sheet markups, which we'll get into a little bit later, and of course tags. Just to the left of my sheet thumbnail are selection boxes, which I can use to select and edit one or more sheets. There are a number of reasons why I may want to edit one or more of my sheets in my record set. For example, let's say that I didn't catch a mistake before uploading. I just mentioned a moment ago how you can manage an entire version set through settings. However, I can also manually edit sheets individually and in more granular detail. I'll select one sheet, then click Edit. If it's a single sheet I have selected, I can adjust that sheet number, title, even relocate it to a different version set if I need to. If I select more than one sheet, I can only bulk edit version sets or tags. On the subject of tags, earlier I mentioned that tags, by discipline, are automatically added to sheets during the upload process as long as they are following the AIA naming standards. Now I'd like to show you how I can increase the effectiveness of tags by quickly applying additional tags through bulk edits. Let's say my project has multiple floors. As the project admin, I may want to add floor tags to help my field team differentiate the similar drawings. The quickest way to locate a group of drawings I'd like to edit is to use the search bar here to search by a keyword found within the sheet's titles. For example, I'll type level 1. This will filter out all the sheets with level 1 in the title. I'll click the selection box here at the top, select all the filtered sheets, and click Edit. In the Edit Sheets panel, I'll click into the Tags field and type Level 1. Click Create Tag here, and click Save. The Filter tool appears here, and like the search bar, it's incredibly helpful to quickly identify specific sheets. I can filter my sheets out by version set, or a combination of tags. Let's add one more tag. First I'll clear the search bar, and then type Floor Plan. I'll select all the filtered sheets, again click Edit, and then create and apply a Floor Plan tag. 
Our users have told us time and time again how significant of an impact tags can be when properly used on their projects. As the project administrator, it's our responsibility to our team to apply as many applicable tags to our sheets as possible. Now that we've taken the time to upload and manage our sheets, let's take a closer look at what we've uploaded and shared with our team. Click any sheet to open the sheet viewer. Starting in the upper left hand corner, I can see the sheet number I'm looking at, followed by the version the sheet belongs to in parentheses. If I click here, I can see additional information such as the issuance date of that sheet, any older versions of that sheet, and which sheet we're currently looking at. At the bottom, I can utilize the different view controls to navigate my way around my drawing. I can zoom into a sheet using one of the two zoom options, like the zoom window, which allows me to click and draw a rectangle around an area I'd like to quickly zoom into. Once zoomed in, I can select the pan option, which looks like a hand, to click and drag my way around the space. If I'd like to zoom back out quickly, I can use the fit to view option here, or hit F on my keyboard. If the page isn't correctly oriented, I can rotate it, and if I want to view my sheet full screen, I can click here. Over here to the right, these arrows will allow me to move forward and backward through my record set. And if I click here, I get a carousel of all my sheets, making it easy to jump to another sheet quickly rather than returning to the list view to search for it. Clicking the X closes the carousel. Now just above, running along the right hand side of the screen is the markup toolbar, which contains a number of different tools that allow me to create markups and annotation for either my own personal use or to publish and immediately share with the rest of my team. Let's say that I received an email from a safety inspector about an issue with structural damage on the outside of this stairwell and I want to document it here on my sheet. I'll select the callout tool, then click and place the markup on my sheet. I'll adjust the size and finally use the text field in the callout panel here to add a description. I'll even add a photo that was included in the email and attach it to the sheet using the photo tool. I'll select the photo tool, place it on the sheet, and click add in the photo reference panel. Drag and drop the photo into the add photo reference dialog, and then click upload. Finally, to make sure my team sees these markups on their copy of the sheets, I'll select each markup and click publish. If I need to share this sheet with another project stakeholder who isn't collaborating with me through the Autodesk Build platform, I can click up here on the More menu and select Share. I'll then select the option to share with anyone with this link, which will allow anyone with this link to access this drawing regardless of if they're using Autodesk Build or not. I'll adjust the expiry date if necessary, and I'll be sure to include the published markups I just made. Finally, I'll put in the email addresses for the individuals I'm sending this link to with the option to add additional notes and then click send. To wrap up this portion of our demo around sheets, I wanted to make sure that I had time to point out one of my favorite features, automatic hyperlinks. Take a look at how some of the detailed callouts on this sheet are colored in blue. These are automatic hyperlinks that are created by Build when the sheets are being processed. Build identified the detailed callout circle and linked them to the matching reference sheet number. This process happens automatically if and only if the sheet numbers were named correctly when they were uploaded and published. The sheet number in your record set must match the sheet number referenced here in the callout in order for the hyperlinks to work. Now if we click on that detailed callout, we have the ability to jump to that reference sheet. Think about comparing these clicks to manually flipping through your paper record set of drawings to find that very same reference sheet. Jumping back and forth between floor plans, elevations, and details with automatic hyperlinks and build will save you a ton of time on the job. There's so much more to explore with the Sheets tool, but there's just not enough time today. We could do an entire webinar on the markup toolbar alone. So please stick around until the end to hear all about all the different ways you can learn more about the Sheets tool. Now we all know it takes a lot more than just drawings to complete a project. You're going to have files like cut sheets, submittals, RFIs, CAD, Revit, and 3D models that you're going to want to organize and share with other project team members and even those who aren't utilizing Autodesk Build. I'll click the X up here to exit out of the sheet view and select the Files tool found here in the side navigation bar. 
The Files tool allows us to upload over 60 different 2D and 3D supported file formats and manage them all within a customizable folder structure to ensure project teams have the access to the right information at the right time in order to complete the project successfully. Inside the Files tool, there are two different root folders for the field and the project files. Any files that are uploaded in the For the Field folder will automatically be synchronized to the Plan Grid Build mobile app where all team members will have view access by default. I may keep files like cut sheets, safety information, specs, and approved submittals in here, examples of important files everyone needs, but nothing too sensitive that I'd be concerned who has access to them. Next is the Project Files folder, which is accessible via the web and can be used to organize files that are a little too sensitive and just aren't ready for the field yet. Just like Sheets and other Autodesk build tools, permissions can be applied to the Project Files folder and any subfolders to control access. This is all managed by the project administrators and users with Manage Permission Level Access. As you can see, I've gotten a little bit of a head start by creating some folders and uploading a few files into them. And with unlimited storage capacity, I've got a long way to go with unlimited room to upload more. When creating a new folder, the first thing I need to do is decide which root folder should it go into. More specifically, who do I want to have access to this folder? Let's start with the safety folder, with files that I'm confident everyone on the job site should have. I'll click on the More menu next to the For the Field folder here and then select Add Subfolder. I'll type the name of the subfolder and click on the check mark, or simply hit Enter on my keyboard to save. If there's a typo or we need to change the name of the folder, click back on the More menu and select Rename. I'll repeat this process and this time for contract documents which I'll keep in the Project Files folder because I'd like to be a little bit more selective for who has access to these. Having said that, notice that I didn't just start uploading files into these folders before I got a chance to set the appropriate permission levels. As the project administrator, I'm going to edit permission levels of these folders by clicking the More menu, first next to the For the Field folder, and then selecting Permissions, which opens the Permissions panel to the right. I'll click Add here. This will open the Add dialog with the option to enter project members' names, emails, roles, or companies, and then choose their appropriate permission level. Leveraging permissions by roles or by company is highly recommended to make it easier to manage permissions. As an example, if we were to assign a permission for the role of an engineer, users who are added to the project and assigned the engineer role will inherit the folder permission assigned to that role. If there are 10 project engineers, we don't need to add each user to access the folder. We simply assign permission by role. Adding permissions to the company is similar. The difference is that the users are assigned to a company and will inherit the permission of that folder assigned by that company's permission level. To put this into practice, I'm going to enter project engineers and then decide on their collective permission level by clicking into the permissions field, triggering our drop down menu of options. As you can see, I have six different options to choose from with different levels of access. Select the most appropriate permission for the folder that is based on what you need. In this case, I'm going to select Create Permission Level for my project engineers so that they can view, download, publish markups, and upload, but can't edit any of these folders without any further discussion with their PMs. Once the permission level is set, I'll click Add to save. It's important to understand that permission levels cascade down from the parent folder down to the subfolders. As a best practice, set the strictest permission level at the parent level and then open permissions as you go down to the subfolder levels. I may want to initially restrict permission levels for all folders across the entire project team and then open up access to specific folders for specific groups or individuals. As a project administrator, it's important that we're aware of the two additional settings that are available under the advanced settings and files, sharing public links and show folder path. When enabled, any users in the project will be able to leverage these two features. I'll start by clicking on settings here and from the drop down menu, select advanced settings. First, there's the public links option, which was briefly mentioned in sheets earlier and which when turned on allows users with view and export permissions or above in sheets, and users with view plus download permissions or above in files to share folders and files publicly. So use this option carefully. 
Toggle this option off or on by clicking here. Once turned on, I can set the public links to expire after a certain number of days here. By default, it's set to 90 days from the date the links were generated. It can be set to a maximum of 365 days and a minimum of 30 days. There's a Show Path folder setting, and as a best practice, we suggest keeping this option turned on so that the team members will see the whole hierarchy of those folders, even if their set permission level means that they won't see the files within those folders. Now I'll click on Files to get back to the main Files page and show you around some of the other great features. Now that I've applied most of the appropriate permission level settings to my folders and set up parameters around the sharing options, it's time to begin uploading files. I'll select the Shop Drawings folder here under For the Field, where you can see I already have one PDF document in there. Let's say that in the case I just received a revision for the shop drawing, and I want to make sure that my team has the most up-to-date information at their disposal. As the project administrator, I have a few different ways of uploading files into my folders. First, I can click here on the blue Upload Files button, click Upload from my computer, or drag and drop into the window. Next, I can mouse over the folder I intend to upload files into, click on the More menu, and select Upload and then Files. Finally, as long as I have the correct folder selected, I'll simply drag and drop the newest revision directly into the same folder. And if the file names are exactly the same, Build will automatically treat that file as a revision just like it does with Sheets. When I see the files being processed, I can click Done and let them finish off to the side while I continue working. I can see their progress in the upload window down here, and if I ever make a mistake of placing a file folder in the wrong location, it's as easy as clicking the More menu and selecting Move, then selecting its new location and clicking Move. Now that my newest version has finished uploading, I can see that Build has indeed treated the new upload as a revision, as indicated here with the V2 in the version attribute. When I click on the PDF file, it opens into a full view of the document, providing me with the very same navigation features and markup tools as we saw in the Sheets tool. So rather than reviewing all of the same features we discussed earlier, I'll take this opportunity to highlight some of the new ones. First, just like Sheets, I can see which version of the file I'm looking at by clicking here. This time, let's take a look at the previous version. When I do select an older version of this file, you can see that Build automatically displays a warning letting me know that I'm not looking at the most up-to-date version, which helps prevent me from making any important decisions with out-of-date data. Having said that, rest assured that Build will always keep the most up-to-date version of that file or sheet on top. Let's say that I was flipping between an old and a new document trying to determine which changes were actually made. This is the perfect opportunity to utilize the Compare tool. Over in the opposite side of the screen is the Compare tool, which when I click it, it allows me to overlay and compare these two files. In fact, I can even click Change here if you wanted to compare one of these files against any other file in my file hierarchy. Once I have files I want to compare, I simply click Compare and Build overlays the two files. Unaffected details will remain in black, while any changes associated with the newest revision will appear in blue matching the legend over here to the left. I'll click the X up here to exit when I'm finished. As the project administrator, I can lock a file preventing other users from deleting, copying, moving, renaming, or overwriting a file. To do this, I can click back here on the More menu and select Lock, which will also be visible and indicated within the symbol attached to the file. If the list view sounds familiar, it should. Earlier I showed you how to toggle between the list view and the grid view within the Sheets tool here. And as mentioned before, this will be your personal preference, but if you like seeing the larger previews of the documents, put your documents into the grid view. If you like seeing more attributes related to the files uploaded, keep it in the list view. Although we don't have the time to go through all the attributes today in this session, I suggest exploring the ways that you can adjust your files list view by clicking over here on the gear icon. You can view or hide attributes using the selection boxes, rearrange their order by dragging and dropping, or completely customize your attributes through the attributes setting. There are so many various ways that all the different Autodesk build tools integrate and work together. And considering we just covered sheets and now the files tool, 
I thought I'd share with you one more awesome feature within the Files tool that really puts a bow on everything we've covered so far. At the beginning of the Files portion of this webinar, I told you that you can keep up to 60 different file types stored within the Files tool. And then we went on to talk about the idea behind the two different root folders and the intentions behind their two separate uses. Let's take a look over here at my Project Files folder, where only a select group would have access to. Let's say that I had an initial set of drawings uploaded in here that I didn't want going out to the broader project team until now. I can take any PDF or Revit file, store it within the Files tool, and publish them directly to the Sheets tool. This workflow is useful when sharing finalized sheets from upstream construction workflows to users in the field without the need to upload those files back to Autodesk Build all over again. I'll simply select the relevant PDF and or Revit file and click Publish to enter into the sheet publishing workflow. And at this point, you should know the rest. I'll give it a proper version set name, an issuance date, and begin the process of leafing in these drawings into the rest of my record set. This does it for the document management portion of this webinar. And trust me when I tell you that there is still so much more to learn. I'm about to begin demoing the Meetings tool to wrap up today's webinar. But if you want to learn more about either the Sheets or the Files tool, stick around to hear about all the additional training resources available to you. But until that time, let's go ahead and jump in and learn all about the Meetings tool. Let's start by closing out the Sheet Publishing workflow by clicking on the X up here and then selecting the Meetings tool from the side navigation bar. No more hunting for lost meeting minutes, questioning accountability, or running the risk of unanswerable claims. The Meetings tool makes meeting management effortless with clear visibility to commitments and provides an organized and easily accessible history for all meeting records. So with that, I'll just jump right in and create my first meeting by clicking Create Meeting. From within this meeting draft, along the top, you can see where I can title my meetings, add invitees, and references. Just below that, I can begin adding in my agenda and content that will make up this meeting. Once individuals are invited to this meeting, they can see it in its current state, so I'm going to first prepare my meeting's agenda before inviting anyone. I'll begin with filling out the information needed for the meeting agenda, starting with the title of the meeting, followed by the date, the start time, end time, and then location. Let's say this meeting is in preparation for my Autodesk training. I'll title it Autodesk Build Field Training Prep. I'll set the date and time. And if this is in person, I'll add a location. However, since so many of our meetings now have been virtual, Autodesk Build has a Zoom integration built right in. So if you have a valid Zoom account, you can simply click here to have your Zoom meeting link automatically generated for you. I'll go ahead and add in the description so that my invitees have an idea of what to prepare for. Let's say meeting to discuss breakout of Autodesk build lessons for upcoming project team training. The meeting discussion is made up of meeting topics that contain meeting items. For example, you may have a topic called safety. And under that topic, you would then have items for safety related issues or even concerns about safety equipment availability. And then you have the option of attaching relevant project related references to those items. For my meeting, I'll make the topic Autodesk build training topics and then create an item for each of the subjects we'll be covering. For example, the sheets tool, files tool, etc. I'll even go on to creating an additional topic and then additional items such as Autodesk cost training topics and then I'll enter in income and then change orders. Now that I feel like I have a solid start on my meeting agenda, I'm almost ready to start inviting project team members. But first, I'll add a quick meeting reference by clicking here on references. When I click on references, I open the reference panel, which provides me with a few different options. First, there are the two different tabs which delineate the two different types of references. First, there's meeting references, which can be files or sheets from their respective tools. And this would be relevant to the general meeting topic, but not the specific meeting items. Item references, which can be files, sheets, RFIs, issues, photos, and PCOs, are attached to the individual items using the More menu, which I'll cover shortly. While I can start adding references to the overall meeting from the panel here, 
When it comes to item references, I need to start from the actual items first. I'll click back on the Meetings tab, click Add Reference, and then from my For the Field Files folder, I'll attach this e-learning book on optimizing construction with cloud workflows for my team to all reference for this upcoming meeting. And then I'll close the panel. Now it's time to start inviting colleagues to my meeting. I'll click here on Invitees to open the Invitees panel. I'll then click Add Invitees, which brings up the Add Meeting Invitees dialog and the list of my current team members. I can use the search bar at the top to quickly search through longer team lists, or in my case, I'll just scroll through and click the corresponding selection boxes for the team members I want to invite. I can also invite other project stakeholders from outside my Autodesk project by clicking here on Create Non-Member, then filling out the required fields before finally clicking Create. Once I have my collective list of invitees, I'll click Done. Important side note, adding invitees does not email them an invitation, but don't worry, we will get to that part a little bit later on. Just like every other Autodesk build tool, when it comes to sharing important project data, you'll always have customizable permission controls to help you manage your varied project team members. First, they're the organizers who can edit meeting agendas, take attendance, and make meeting minutes official to send them out to the necessary individuals. Next are the invitees. They can view the meetings and have meeting items assigned to them. And finally, general project administrators who can view and edit all meetings. When new team members are initially added to the project, they are set as invitees by default. However, if I wanted to share the organizational burden like I always do with my colleague Sabina, I'll click here on the More menu corresponding with her name and then select Make Organizer. Now that I have a team associated with my meeting, I can revisit my meeting discussion and start delegating out some of these topics. To do that, I'll hover my mouse over the left side of the item to reveal and then click on the More menu. First, I'll set a due date to have the lessons completed by. I'll assign it out to a team member. and then add an item reference. In this case, maybe I'll reference some good sheet examples for Aaliyah to use in her lesson. I'll assign one more topic item out to my colleague Daniel. And this time, I'll select issues from the reference menu and create and assign a new issue in the moment. which I can now track both here on my meeting as well as in the Issues tool. Stick around until the end today to find out where you can learn more about the Issues tool. Now that I've created a solid framework for this meeting, I'll go ahead and send out the notification to my invitees by clicking the More menu in the upper right-hand corner and then selecting Share with Invitees. I can also take a moment to add this event to my calendar. Next, let's talk about how we utilize the meetings tool on the day of the big meeting. First, we can use the meetings to record the attendance by clicking back on invitees here and then clicking on the corresponding selection boxes to mark them as in attendance. Next, as the meeting progresses, we can capture notes in the meeting summary at the bottom, or you can put in notes in a new line of a meeting item. I can just click into the meeting item, type enter, cause a line break, and begin typing. You'll notice that I even have formatting options. On the subject of editing, you can continue adding topics and items and assigning them out throughout the meeting. Perhaps during the meeting we end up changing some of the statuses of these items. If Aaliyah has already tackled these lessons, I'll go ahead and adjust her status to closed. 
while perhaps some of the others are still open or ongoing. As my topics and items continue to grow, I can utilize the filter tool to filter out specific items you'd like to quickly recall by assignee, status, or if I flagged it. I can also just hit my action items to just pull up items assigned to me. Once my meeting has come to a conclusion and I've documented everything thoroughly, I can click up here on the drop down arrow next to agenda and then convert this over to meeting minutes. While this locks down everything within the meeting, organizers can always switch back to the agenda to continue editing these details if necessary. Finally, I can click over here on the more menu button and export this meeting out as a flattened PDF report. And lastly, I can create follow-up meetings. With follow-up meetings, there are a couple things that happen here. First, a create follow-up meeting dialog pops up explaining that this follow-up meeting will copy current meeting descriptions, all non-closed agenda items, invitees, and the location. And then we just need to select a follow-up date. Then, from the meetings list view, you can see under the version number attribute that the new agenda is now identified as number two. And if you click on it, you can see the names and dates of who created these meetings and when. This list also acts as a hyperlink to those meetings listed here and is a quick way of revisiting any of that historical data. Well, this wraps up my overview of the meetings tool and marks the conclusion of this demonstration. I'll flip back over to my presentation now and finish this webinar with some Q&A. As we wrap up this webinar, I recognize that we've covered a lot and you may not remember everything we discussed, so I want to take a moment and point out a handful of great resources to help you continue your educational journey with the Autodesk Construction Cloud. First, if you enjoyed today's webinar, I'd strongly suggest checking out some of the other coming live webinars scheduled throughout the month, which explore some of the other tools within the Autodesk Construction Cloud. And if you're having any difficulty making live sessions fit into your schedule, we also offer the ability to view any of these webinars on demand at your convenience. Next, I'm excited to introduce you to the newest addition to the Autodesk Learning Offerings, the ACC Learning Center. In today's webinar, I only had enough time to give you a brief introduction to just a few of the amazing tools that the Autodesk Construction Cloud has to offer. The ACC Learning Center houses a library of self-paced training content that will take you through every detail of our unified platform, with each subject area broken down into short, easily consumable videos. We also understand that webinars and training videos are for everyone and that you may require a dedicated specialist who can customize a training program to your specific business needs. If that's the case, I'd highly recommend reaching out to our delivery services team who has worked with thousands of customers worldwide to provide an effortless training and deployment experience for both the office and the field. As I pointed out during the demo, for a more immediate solution, you can get product help and contact support directly from within the product at acc.autodesk.com. If you have a question while you're working, click the question icon and choose help to access the product help site or click contact support to open the support hub. Thank you to everyone who had questions. We've now come to the end of our time today. And if you have any additional questions, I encourage you to reach out to our support team or check out some of those additional training resources I referenced earlier. Everyone here at Autodesk is excited to continue helping support the great work that you do every day. Thanks again for joining us today and have a wonderful rest of your day.